Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Genuine Chit Chat. This week is part two of my movie chat with Alex Hart and my always fabulous co-host and girlfriend Megan. Now I won't bore you too much with the details uh, because obviously it's a movie chat so it's pretty uh, self-explanatory what you're going to get. Um, but just to clarify, we don't talk about any spoilers uh, in this film. I th- in fact, there's an app, there's a really light spoiler, like a really small one about Detective Pikachu at the end. Um, but it, I wouldn't say it ruins the film or really affects it in any way. But that's the only spoiler I can think of. Everything else we talk about, there's no spoilers with Joker and Avengers Endgame and a few other films as well. Um, we talk about yeah, films and then also how fame affects people and me, Alex and Megan all talk about how much we love Paul Rudd so uh, those are basically what you can look forward to in this episode um, I will just say I said in part one as well um, there was a little bit of a mic issue with this one one of my mics didn't record it's my bad because I'm an idiot basically simple as so I had to use my backup and my backup as you'll be able to hear isn't as good quality um, it's only on Alex's side unfortunately so you can hear by this intro and by me and Megan that's the general quality genuine chit chat normally is um, it's just that I messed up so Alex's uh, mic wasn't being used right so essentially in that regard it basically just means that if you're a new listener and this is your first time then don't it's not always going to be this low quality in a sense so just want to preface that and warn you guys before the chat gets started um and there will be a quick promo for the comics and motion podcast um i've collaborated with those guys loads of times i think i may even mention them briefly in this episode i can't remember but um comics motion absolutely smashing podcast absolutely love those guys and yeah that's really it guys trying to keep my intros a little bit shorter because i tend to ramble quite a lot at the start so i'll be back at the end just to chat about what's coming up and what you can expect from genuine chit chat and the usual sort of additional information i tend to ramble a little bit more at the end of the outro because you know people listen that far generally more interested so yeah thanks as always for tuning in guys follow on the usual social media channels and i'll talk to you at the end we are comics in motion i'm dave the comic nerd and i'm chris the tv and movie geek You can download our show from your favourite podcast catcher. We review TV shows and movies that are based on comic books. So if you can come along and join in the fun, that'd be super. Welcome to Genuine Chit Chat, where we have honest conversations with interesting people. And I'm your host, Mike Burton. Let's loop back to films and we'll just say films this year one we've got to talk about which we've all seen is Joker yes. uh, and obviously we won't say any major plot spoilers even though there's only it's such a, there's barely it's not barely a plot but it's just a journey of one guy and I, I found that a lot of people who haven't seen it yet I say go watch it but don't expect too much because it's brilliant and it's such a good movie but the problem is is that it's got so much hype behind it now it can't live up to the expectations of the hype so everyone's hating it because they're expecting it to be something it's yeah. not I really I liked think, it I think depending yeah. on how much you also one thing that you can get from this film how much you appreciate movies yeah. you will like this film more yeah the cinematography the editing getting, I'm getting old now I'm, I'm only 21 <laughs> you're not 21 fuck <laughs> off <laughs> I'm getting old 21 so I, I now get irritated it's not, I don't know, you know, I'm not a grumpy person, I'm you know, a happy person, but I, I, people that don't understand film annoys me, <laughs> because you can watch any film, right, and you know, oh, it's good, it's bad, and stuff, mm. but then, but some people just are like, ignorant to the actual meaning of films, because there's a lot, you know, they, they, you know, some films have a lot of meaning to them, Yeah, and yeah. I think that's what some people will miss. From the Joker as well. Yeah, so. they're expecting Flash. That because like Heath Ledger's Joker, he's incredible. He's deep. He's dark, but he's quite flashy because he says a lot of cool one-liners. He looks badass and he does loads of cool yeah. badass things. But the Joker in the movie is it's a slow burn, but it, there's that. moments of brilliance. But this is the thing: is that it's a different Iteration. take on it because mm. it's not because all the other films that have had the Joker in, the Joker has already, he is the Joker, like that's yeah. him. Whereas this film is the progression of how it happens, which makes it more interesting because you see yeah. why he gets to that point and why it's he becomes the Joker. one ever to not rely on source material, isn't it? If yeah. the whole thing just... Yeah, because I think Batman Killing Joke is the main Joker origin story, which I haven't read that yet. I've got the graphic novel, but I haven't read it yet. Yeah, I've heard the, the animation of it's good because it's basically just the comic, but purely animated, isn't it? Uh, um, but yeah, the film itself, I think, is amazing. Yeah, um, the small things they got, you know, what I really like when it came out, they had a lot of people uh, working in like 
psychologists basically okay. they all reviewed the movie of how realistic how realistic it is to someone with mental illness to break yeah. down and you know yeah miss social cues and yeah. all this crap that he was presenting because with my field of work, probably with you, Megan, with working as a teacher yeah. like me, um, and especially with how I work with trauma-based children. Yeah, because you're a lot more, you're basically SEN kids, isn't it? But like oh, trauma-induced yeah. SEN kids, essentially. Yes, that's it. And, you know, I have to work this daily of, you know, think small things, mm-hmm. that, you know, tick for these, these just the little red flags and things in the sun. Yeah, sense. but in the, in the film, you can watch it and you can, you know, I think if they were to do a, a training for my type of job, yeah, watch the, so I get them to watch the Joker and try and pinpoint all these little things. Yeah. Like fucking hundreds of thousands of things. Yeah. Really, every scene has got these small triggers and stuff that you could, as a psychologist, like people when they're reviewing it, you could tick them off and be like, mm. bah, 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 It's bah, interesting bah, to bah, see bah. how much stuff gets messed and what actually yeah, can yeah, happen man. from it. It was. It's kind of nice to have it. Well, it's not nice, but you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's good to have a film that shows some sort of recognition as to how badly treated people with mental health problems can actually have it, especially it. in America. Like, oh, yeah, in America, it's even worse totally than over here. Disregarded. And I think that's the powerful part of the movie is if you know more about how the brain works, it's more of a masterpiece than most people think. If you ain't got one thing I'll say, if you ain't got enough budget to go to the cinema, you can watch King of Comedy. It's basically the same film. I haven't seen King of Comedy, so... Yeah. Basically the same film. And Robert De Niro plays his character in Joker, but in that film. Oh, really? Not the same character. But like a, like a like a homage yeah. to it almost, like a nod in a yeah, sense. Yeah, the, the film Joker is basically Taxi Driver and... King of Comedy, he said this actually, he said this in his interview. That, yeah. You know, those are the two films that inspired him to make this film. He put them together and all you got, bibbidi bubbidi boo. Yeah. Well, the thing I'm. I'm worried about now is when they when they initially released it, they said it's just going to be standalone, oh, it's not no, connected to anything no, else, and thing. they're going to make a sequel. Well, they can. Um, no, they will, but it's not going to be very good. That's the problem. It's just going to be so just, shit. It's not going to exist in my world. I'll tell you what they're going to do. I'll tell you world. what they're going to do. They're going to do the Robert Patterson Batman. If that does well, then they're going to release a Joker movie no. that's going to have him somehow <laughs> interact Don't. with Robert, Robin Patterson's Joker. Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson's Batman, rather. Don't do it. They're going to do it, though. You know it. That's the problem. They can't just have one-off cool movies anymore unless you're Danny Boyle. But then even Danny Boyle released you know, Train Spotting 2. Granted, there's two... Okay, what I'll two do books, with the Joker but... too, okay? One day, whenever this comes out, I'm gonna ignore everything I see of it. I'm gonna ignore it. But I want you to phone me, Mike, and you tell me, okay, it's all right. It looks okay. All right. Other than that, I'm gonna go into a hole. It depends what the day. thing is. It depends what genre they go with. Because if they do superhero, like actual so actual afraid, superhero, right? they're gonna completely ruin it. But if they keep it with a the problem is, I don't know how much further they can go, because it's basically, the whole story is obviously of him basically slowly getting to breaking point and then snapping. And it's like, you can't really replicate that without taking away from the original film. Because if they start, if they do Joker 2, and they start off a few years after Joker 1, and he's kind of half repaired himself, it's going to be, well, you're just going to do exactly the same again. So it's going to lose all impact. Oh. But if they keep him already broken, it's going to be what? Well, it's just going to be a mental case. Yeah, but surely, surely the second film would just be him as the Joker, which is something that we've seen over and over again. You know, it's always that, you know, it'll be a weaker film. Yeah, and it'll exactly. Feel like disjointed. And it'll yeah. Feel like the first one, yeah, it's, it was or good. I'd say to someone, oh, you know, 10 years' time, have you seen The Joker? It was an amazing film. Not. I've seen the first one, that's really good. Second one's not very good. There, but that's what always happens. That. It always happens. It happens. It's so rare to have a sequel that's genuine. The, there's only. There's a couple of circumstances you can have a sequel that's better. And nine times out of ten, it's because there was already source material. You know, with Harry Potter or with Lord of the Rings or with Star Wars. Actually, Star Wars is different. Um, I didn't mean to say that. But, like, when they've already thought out they're going to have a trilogy, they're going to have a se- set of films. And there's, if there's books, it's fine. If they've already, from the starting film, gone, right, we're going to make a trilogy. This is the first one. Yeah. Sequels can be better. But usually, it's they make a one. They make one film. It did really it does well. So well, they go. We need to make a second film for money. It's a lower quality, but it's normally okay. And then they make a third one that's wank. It's that just annoying. It's all just like time. trying to get blood out of a stone, really, isn't it? It's just them trying to make more money for more the sake money. of making money. Yeah, but exactly. it's that's how I feel about the Fantastic Beast franchise. Yeah, the second one was just dark for no necessary reason. Just crap the second boring. one. I mean, I don't like any of the Fantastic Beast films, but the first one was okay. The second one was absolute pure I shit. And I am I'm a massive Harry Potter fan. So am I. I watched the second one and was like, there's some really dark stuff in it for no apparent reason. But then, yeah, it just is redundant. Like, my students talk to me about Harry Potter because they know that I like it. And they're like, oh, which is your favourite Fantastic Beast? F- like, which is your favourite Harry Potter film? And they're like, oh, mine is Fantastic Beast. I'm like, no. No, no. no. I'm like, that is not Harry Potter. And they're like, oh, but it's, it's to do with the Wizarding World. I'm like, yes, it's the Wizarding no. World of Harry Potter. It is not Harry Potter. 
Anyway. Do not even try and compare the films. Every, yeah, I know. Everyone knows that The Prisoner of Azkaban is the best Harry Potter movie. Fuck ah, no. off. Everyone knows that's Prisoner one, that's one of, of Azkaban least favorite. is one of my least favourite Harry Potter movies. Carry on, Mark. What were you going to say? <laughs> I, 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 I love... I think Prisoner of Azkaban is cracking, but to, for uh, me, personally, I think the best one... <laughs> I think Goblet, Goblet of Fire is my favourite, but I think the eighth one is probably the best. Just it's it is one of the very few films where you actually get the end of a film franchise and it's not disappointing. Lord of the Rings did the best one because Lord of the Rings: Return of the King is one of the best ones ever yeah, made. And then but you had the Hobbit and the third one was the worst. Same with Greece, though, isn't it? Greece was you know it came out. I haven't seen Storm, Greece. Storm. Greece was so good, and they came so out with good. the second one. It's so oh, shit. They stormed it, didn't they? Same with Mean, mean Girls. Oh my god, Mean Girls 2 is absolute dog shite. Oh, I love watching films that are just dog shit. Yeah, you know, there's, there's shit for the sake of shit. Because, you know, I would love to, you can put those films on and go, watch this fucking garbage. Watch this burn. We'll have a few drinks and go, you know, yeah. this is. Can't wait to watch Grease 2 with my mate. <laughs> but then some people really try to make a sequel and it's still dog shit. And then you can't just go, oh, let's watch this with this. It's the so problem shit. is a lot of the films in superhero genre or that sort of thing is that if they're not amazing, they're almost pointless because, like, this is what I felt about Justice League is that Justice League... I, oh, actually, I have seen that one. I think Justice League is actually okay as a movie, but I think the problem is, is that if it came... Podcast movies and says that, you're going to get... Lose no, but, of your no, but the thing is, is but I... Like no, but I want to clarify... <laughs> no one likes me anyway. <laughs> I, I want to clarify. Justice League, I think Batman vs Superman is a pile of shit. I think that Justice League I was is, so confused in Batman vs Superman, I, I, but that's because I haven't seen any of the other ones. You don't need well. to. It's just, well confused, confused. it's just a confusing crap movie. Just looking but, all the movies on your thing here... Yeah, just working out if they've got a sequel and if they're good. The th- the thing is, is that with I will say with Justice League, my problem with it was the the main villain was shit and the ending was crap. But as a, as a film, generally it was okay. But my problem with it was it had some kind of funny moments, it had some kind of cool action scenes. But it's like, why would you even waste your time watching Justice League if you can watch any of the Avengers movies, which are funnier, better production, less disjointed, it's just the action scenes are better, like every conceivable point of Justice League. I, I've seen Justice League. It's DC, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Batman and Superman. I, th- I don't remember it that much. I, I remember seeing it. I saw it in the cinema, but I don't really remember it. I don't think it's amazing. I think it's all right. I just think the problem is, is that why would you even consider watching it if you can watch a film that's infinitely better in every single way? <laughs> exactly. It's just pointless it's, it's, and that's the problem with a lot of sequels if they make a sequel to Joker it's empirically objectively no, it will be shit. unless they pull some sort of million in one trick it can't be better than the original what the fuck is wrong with them it's money isn't it Todd Phillips wants to make money and Joaquin Phoenix wants yeah, to make money no I don't think he wants money he doesn't care but obviously he wants to be a good actor and a big actor and the way he's going to get I mean this is going to blow him up because like a lot of people have never heard of him even though he's been in film for so long. People don't realise he's River Phoenix's brother. Well, yeah, but a lot of people don't know who River Phoenix is. I don't know who that is. Well, have you ever seen Stand By Me? You know it? Well, I was just told you I haven't seen, seen Stand that By that Me. Film, so. huh? I know how uh, River Phoenix died, though. <laughs> he died in that bar, didn't he? Um, yeah. Oh, is he dead? His brother's yeah, yeah. dead, yeah. Huh? His, his brother died years ago. It was like the late 90s, oh, yeah, I think. Yeah. There's this bar that I think Johnny Depp part owned or something. Yeah, yeah. And it was like it was like one of the roughest bars in Hollywood or something. And people used to go in there and get into fights and just get killed. And Jesus Christ. I think there was a curse. People believed there was like... I don't believe in curses, obviously. But it was nicknamed or known as like the cursed bar or something because... They kept having bar fights and people would get killed in really weird, random ways. Like, someone would just get punched once, hit the floor, dead. So, just like that. And why did it not get shut down? It did. That's why it's not oh, there anymore. Right, it got okay. shut down within, like... It, was, it wasn't open for that long, but there was quite a few negative things that happened in that. Yeah. I think... I can't remember if River Phoenix was killed in a shootout or if he was killed in a... It was some sort of brutal way in, the, in that bar. It was pretty horrendous. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's... I mean, I've only seen uh, Joaquin Phoenix in a couple of things. I saw him in Inherent Vice and that film was awful. But, I oh haven't seen God, him in anything what else. Film that was. Oh, that sucked. I watched a half edge. Couldn't get into it. None of made any sense. Um, how much are you into the? Uh, with we won't spoil Avengers movies because Megan hasn't seen them. But yeah, I haven't seen the majority of the Avengers films. Yeah. Avengers movies. Obviously, Endgame without spoiling it for Megan. I thought I was cracking. I didn't think no, it. Was awesome. I didn't think it was as good as Infinity War, but I think it's damn close. I think they did it. Damn a, close. The music's better. I think they did. A, I think the end scene, though, the big. You know, there's obviously a big battle scene because always is in every Avengers movie. I think the end of Infinity War is better than the end of Endgame. But... Someone always loses a hand in Avengers. Oh films. no, he just died in the overdose. By the way, sorry. Was it overdose he yeah, died of? Just outside the Viper Club. Oh, so it was near the club. Okay, outside, yeah, yeah. it must be someone else. We were um, talking about our ass there. 
Yeah. Um, and then we saw Spawn of Far From Home, which Megan has seen. I Fantastic. loved that film. It was so Because so I, I, cause I oh, saw the trailer for it and I really wanted to see it, but I hadn't seen Spider-Man Homecoming. So we watched that. Film. I loved it. It was so goddamn good. Uh, it was really We watched Homecoming and Megan was like, that was good, but not amazing. I got bored of Homecoming. I got a bit like fidgety during that film. Yeah, I'd say... Um, for enjoyment value, I'd say the second was actually more fun. And, and the chemistry, you know, it's yeah. still a teen movie. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, All of the characters interact in such a strong. good way. Yeah. Other superhero movies, other than like Ant Man. I think Ant Man goes to the galaxy, but she hasn't seen Ant Man yet, but I she loves Paul I love Rudd. Paul Rudd, but I haven't seen Ant Man. Oh, Ant Man's so good. Both yeah. of them are so good. Yeah, and then when Ant Man gets into the Avengers movies, it's even better. Like, oh, oh, I love man. it. And Living with Yourself has to be mentioned quickly. Oh, that, 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 that it's like, I haven't so seen that yet. Rudd. What I haven't seen series. that either. I've That's, heard it's good though. It's really good. Paul Rudd. And Paul Rudd's in the new Ghostbusters after like Yes. You know, I heard about that, yeah. Paul Rudd should have more. Should, Paul Rudd is just fucking. I love Paul Rudd so goddamn much. Love. He's probably one of the best people in, in the earth at the moment. I think one of the best stories I knew about Paul Rudd is that when he's. Because he's in Captain America Civil War um, as Ant Man. And he. Because he's obviously not a big actor like all the other ones are like a big superhero like obviously you got like Robert Downey Jr. in it and people like that and he's just mainly a guy who's been in indie films and com- and uh, comedies but he's still a great actor and stuff and apparently on set when they would like stop filming he would run out and grab the Captain America shield like be posing with it and they'd be like Paul you need you need to put that down it's like a really expensive prop and he's like no I am Captain America and then it's like confiscate it off him because <laughs> he, he was seems just like, like a really nice guy yeah I've seen all the interviews he apparently is um, I I like to find out if celebrities are nice. But yeah. It was something. I try not to look into it too far because sometimes it upsets me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I found out that Philip Schofield was an absolute twat. Oh, really? Yeah. R- we were talking about him the other day, weren't we? Yeah. yeah. I love him and Holly Willoughby. So I love their I relationship. Very nice. You know, oh. He's very nice to wear out of a set. I, no, no, I just ruined that for you. Bradley Walsh apparently amazing. One of the nice. The one from the chase. Yeah. 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 He seems really cool. Um, someone who's not very nice that apparently is um, the guy from. Is Edward Norton? You're gonna say? No, Rocket Man. Um, Taron Egerton. Yeah. He's not very nice. He's not. I've seen him in a few interviews now. What? Really? Who is? Who is? Uh, Kingsman. The main oh, guy. Oh yeah. 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 Oh. Well, funny enough, he's got like in in Kingsman, he's got like a proper like chavy accent. But you actually look, and he went to like I think it was like Cambridgeshire or something. He went to like some acting school, and I was like. The guy he's taking the mech out of in Kingsman, I have a feeling he's actually quite like yeah, that person. He is. Apparently, Edward Norton is an absolute horrendous Who's person. Edward Norton? So is, um... He's in Fight Club and he's in. Is he the main character? Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. The yeah, one okay. that's not Brad Pitt. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a few apparent twats. But I, I listen to a podcast with Edward Norton with uh, Joe Rogan, and he seems like a really interesting, smart guy, but I think he's probably just. I think some of some of these actors get so wrapped in their roles and things get yeah. so stressed on set that they basically just take it out on yeah, they lose other Marlon, people. Like, uh, was it Marlon Brando in Apocalypse Now? He's like, apparently he was a, apparently Marlon Brando was an absolute cunt. Who um Marlon Brando? Apparently he was awful. Oh yeah, the guy the work. guy from June M- M- Michael Cera. Yeah. Apparently he's an asshole. Really? Not very nice. Man. Yeah. Apparently yeah. he is an absolute twat. Really? Apparently, like I think I remember he. Freaked out on set once, and there's like videos online of he's just screaming at oh, people. Christian Bale again, not a very nice person. I've heard Christian Bale's not that nice he's as well. Fucking crazy. Yeah, there yeah, are a couple. So. I think DiCap. I've heard DiCaprio's all right, but I think DiCaprio is like another level above everyone. He's like, a he's a massive environmentalist, isn't he? Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, he's he's. he's I've he's, heard that. Like God tier now. Yeah, I've heard he's, that some him and Johnny Depp are in that sort of realm because I think God, Johnny Depp is nuts, isn't he? Yeah, Johnny Depp. <laughs> no, no, but I mean their their fame their fame. <laughs> have gone up but yeah Johnny oh, Depp's gone I would say that, he's, that uh, he's Leonardo smart. DiCaprio is, is higher up than Johnny Depp Johnny think, Depp hasn't yeah, done yeah. anything recently yeah I think Leonardo he is now DiCaprio is like I don't think he sees him, us as people no I think he apparently I've, I've heard it, uh, there's someone who was talking in a Joe Rogan podcast and he said he went to a party with and DiCaprio was there and apparently just DiCaprio's got like any house party or anything he goes to, he's got his own area everywhere. And Jesus he goes, Christ. he basically goes, he just sits down and he basically just has people all around him. And he can just, I think he was saying like, he almost like summons people. He'll basically literally just speak to someone and everyone would just go quiet. And then this person would just walk forward and sit down with him. And then everyone kind of goes back to talking again. It's like, Imagine. cause he's so famous, so rich and he's so big now that you can't ever get to the, his, and apparently he's not that bad to work with, but I think he's quite intense I think he's like a really, really well, I mean, intense person. Yeah, because he likes to get into the things for the Revenant, didn't he? He he did some like proper character acting yeah, for the not, Revenant. He's not a method actor as such, though. Method he's acting, that's the thing. Method actor. He gets yeah. well. It's like he 
Apparently though, because like when he did Django Unchained, though he got he didn't That's like saying he didn't like saying the M word constantly. And apparently Samuel Jackson said to him, "Dude, like we we hear this all the time. Like just it, we're not offended by you saying it in a film representing racial problems. So it's yeah. fine." I love that film. Yeah, it's what? a cracking movie. Um, Man on the Moon. Oh, that's that film that Jim Carrey did a, a documentary about as well, didn't yeah. he? I haven't seen that yet. You see how fucking weird that is? No. I mean, Jim Carrey is nuts. Actor, right? Jim Carrey just absorbed the role, but then just just became the person. But not in like a way which is you know good for the film. It was generally like... Because um, based on some sort of famous artist or something, isn't no, it? No, no, it's, it's based off the um, comedian. Oh, comedian. Um, the, stupid, the really weird guy. He said she was really weird. But Jim Carrey became him. Basically, did he have like a weird breakdown or something? Yeah, he had a breakdown, but then he was falling out of people on set because of attitudes. He was like the person. That what comedian was it? Um, Is it the one that died? He did die. Yeah. Wait, the one that died on stage? No, that was someone recently. No, 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 no it fucking no, wasn't. No, Who's no, the one no, that no. died on stage that wore the fez? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Tommy Cooper. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I was like, no, it wasn't Tommy everyone Cooper. Thought everyone, thought, yeah, everyone thought it was a joke, so no one tried to help him. Yeah, and he, they, everyone just watched him die because they all yeah. thought it was a, an act. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so brutal. Um, so yeah, Man on the Moon. Um, Stuco Nine Nine Nine. Um, Life of uh, Andy Kaufman. That was uh, it. I've never yeah. even heard of him. I don't know anything about him. I just know of. But yeah, no. Um, he just fucking went absolutely mental. So there's a documentary about Man on the Moon. Yeah. Man on the Moon is a film about Dan Kaufman. Yeah. There's a documentary about uh, Jim Carrey as the role of Dan Jesus Carrey. Christ. Yeah. And he basically was him through the whole of the film. Didn't come out of character. And he was pretending to be Annie Hoffman. And he was, you know, really fucking pissing people off. With yes. He, in the, he was acting like he was him. And he felt mental. It was like a disaster artist. And like, uh, oh, that's class. That's a great movie. Have you seen Disaster Uh that is that the one about the room? Yeah. No, I've not seen it, but I have seen the room. Yeah, because with Jim Carrey, he's basically stopped doing acting a lot now, and he basically had like a break, a yeah, mental yeah, break. Do you remember that, he's that weird em- Emma Stone video? Do you remember yeah, that? That was yeah, weird as fuck. That. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I do understand why celebrities just lose their mind because imagine she's not having a normal life anymore. That's why Billie Eilish is so fucking depressed. Yeah, she's not happy now. But last year, and the year before, she was in a dark place, man. She was going to kill herself. And yeah. Her family forcing her to do all this shit that she didn't want to do. And mm. people just leave their mind. I can imagine it, right? Someone, my, my life's boring most of the time. I just can imagine people there all the time just watching me and shit like that. I think the problem is being an actor. I is literally what, hate it. What, the problem is being an actor and stuff is what happens is you, you have to try and go to all these auditions and get constantly rejected all the time. Yeah. And then you finally get a job and then you it's really, really, really intense for like months like waking up stupid o'clock in the morning doing the exact same thing over and 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 over, and over again. And then... You put all that work into it and then the film gets released and if you're lucky people praise you. If not, they hate the film and they call you shit and then that's a big weight on you. But also, when you become super famous, you can't just walk around the corner shop and buy a loaf of bread because you just get harassed by people and it becomes this weird thing where you become sort it's of It's even like having like an actual social life like going out drinking. Yeah. Oh god, Which can you imagine going out to town of the Hobbit like drinking and then everyone knows who you are? Like, Yeah, I just wouldn't like it and I'm... Um... Yeah, people behind the curtain have that still, you know. I'd like to be in production of films, mm. which would be really cool, but then people don't realise. That's what I'd like to do, make films without them knowing who I am. I'd like to be um, kind of Corey Taylor famous, as in The Singer of Slipknot, where... He's famous enough where if he goes to like alternative places, people recognise him and take photos, and he's prolific. But if he just walks around... Especially because he's in Slipknot and they wear masks. Yeah. He, you can basically... You don't have to recognise him. It's like Sia. She obviously always covers her face. Well, so that, it's, it's a very smart way to do it, right? Yeah, well, exactly. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, well, a lot of those sort of artists... Like, I, I, I used to, when I was younger, I was like, oh, I'd love to be famous. But now I'm older, I'm like, no, I'd love to be... absolutely hate now it. Now I'm older, I'd love to be rich, not famous. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be rich. I've never been in <laughs> Like, um... Oh, well, well like, uh... Know. What's the Muppet? You guys heard that, that's... What did you say? No, no, my stomach just rumbled. Oh. <laughs> rumbled in the jungle. I'll try to make a note of like a 120 or stomach rumble, see if we can hear it, and I'll yeah. just jack the volume up. So it's like... Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a storm of <laughs> I Yeah, I would hate to be famous. I would hate... Like, I hate going... Like it's less, it's less so now because I don't work in the same town that I live in. Yeah. But even when I did live in Andover, getting recognised by students... Like uh, kids seeing you and being like, "Oh look, it's Miss Gritty." It's like, oh, please no, <laughs> yeah. just let me live my life. I actively avoid seeing students from school. I, like I don't have any issues because I mean I work an hour away from where I live. Oh, so yeah, but if I go, it always happens now. If I go to the shops near the school after school, mm-hmm. I'm always going to sit and have another bit of a rumble there. 
<laughs> but yeah, I've seen a few times, but then I've actually walked the other directions and not have that conversation with them. Yeah, I went to Costco the other day and bumped into two of my ex-students from the school. Oh, okay. And they were like, hi! I was like, oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this um, this podcast is going off the rails, um, so we'll loop it back and then we'll end it in a moment. We'll end it uh, in a moment. <laughs> um, so let's, let's, let's quickly talk about. I want to hear your opinion on. Oh, there's okay. There's three. The three three films. How many it, films have you actually got on there that you could talk about? Because what I'd do is if there's ones that you can't, we're getting got some time for. I'll sum them up in a noise. So you give them to me. I'll sum them up in a noise. Okay, Detective Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I will say, Detective Pikachu, stunning film visually. I liked that film visually, <laughs> inc- visually stunning. I, I like the, the. I can't wait for more Pokemon movies or stuff yeah, to come out. Which and then there will be one amazing one, and the rest will be shit. But I, I thought, also like the fact that we got little headbands when we went. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> oh, nice. We got little Pikachu ears, little yeah. Pikachu headbands. Yeah. I felt the plot was quite weak, and the fact that you know, oh, spo- mild, mild spoiler alert. Um, Mewtwo is in the film, and he's bad and it's, he's not bad because if you watch Pokemon the first movie and which exactly actually, the same. it follows on from Pokemon the first movie because they even referenced the first movie yeah, you so you're like you know he's not bad so at the start it's immediately well that's clearly not it and then it's like who could this Pikachu character be it's like well the only character who's ever mentioned in the whole film who isn't in it yeah, it's so obvious it's like I'm yeah, not going to say exactly who it is but well, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah I, I thought the film was good visually but not that uh, yeah. plot wise um, It Chapter 2 what's your noise for that yeah did you? How do you think? All word, no. mm? <laughs> All right, Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> how do you think it compared to the the first one? Do you prefer the first or the second one? I personally uh, prefer the first one. First one's a very good introduction to the whole character series, the yeah. books and stuff. I thought it was really good. But there's a lot you can take away from the second one. Like it's more in depth. There's a lot more story going on. The characters have got a lot more to do. It is also a lot longer though, as well. Um, it's very, I can. They're one of those two films. I know they're really following from each other, but. I wouldn't class, you know, it's hard thing to explain. They're very different films. They, are they different. do feel very different. You're right very there. Very different film. But it's good because the first one is aimed for the children, they're going for this stuff, which is what the second the second part of the original series missed was it was so boring. They went they went too much to the mm, adults. Yeah. They stand by me for the first one, which was really good for the part one, of the original, and then they went old as a book for the <laughs> second bit, which is like fucking out turn the page. Yeah. But then the new one they they up. Uh, they made it, you know, updated it. They made it grown up. They made yeah. it a different type of film, and I think they they hit off with a tee. It's much out of the park, really. Yeah, I thought I was. I was sceptical when it was how long it was and I was like oh, three hour horror movie I, I was think, like can I deal with that and then you get about two thirds through it and it doesn't feel like it's been on it for that long it doesn't it, 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 you know, it's a, it doesn't feel like a long there's a lot in it I think, I think the second one freaked me out more than the first one did and I'm oh. not going to spoil yeah, the it but the, the specifically the specifically the spider bit the freaked spider, me the, the fuck head. out you know that that bit was horrendous. I hated yeah, that, that was, bit. I was watching it I was making for sick and I watched like, the spider legs grow out I was like oh that was, oh, it was brilliant. It was absolutely Lo- awful. Loved it in the film because it's so creepy, but that's the thing. It made you feel that guttural feeling of disgust. Mm. But yeah, it's, it's it's almost to a lesser degree, but almost like alien compared to aliens. Where yes, same world. Thriller, yeah, horror. it's not quite because alien and aliens are, are a lot more different, but it's almost like a diluted version of that difference. Yeah. In I a like sense. It. I like it. Yeah. Cool. And, and then the other one I want to ask about is it, it's actually quite a small film that a lot of people haven't seen, and we watched it on the plane, which is uh, Fighting oh. with My Family. Oh. Man, that's such a I've good never movie. Had a film that made me smile so much this year. I love that film. It's so pleasant. Nick Frost is just brilliant. Yeah, Mark Johnson is amazing. Um, uh, it's Lena he- Heady, uh, he- 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 the one who plays um, the one who plays thinking it's Game very, of Thrones. Really um, nice and I smiled the whole way through it. Yeah, um, it's just really warming film. And yeah. I think that's really nice film to watch. I, my favorite bit about it is the end when it shows you the because. It goes based on a true story, and you always hear those films based on a true story. Every horror film says based on yeah. true events. And then when you watch Fight and Fanny, it says based on a true story, you go, okay. And then it ends, and then it shows you the footage of the actual family yeah, and the girl really, who, nice. really talking about it. And you go, oh, so I think I listened to a podcast of Steve Merchant who directed it, and obviously him and The Rock made it together because The Rock just basically hit Steve Merchant up. I love blue. The Rock. The Rock is great. And he's in the film, obviously, and he's great in it as well. And it's like. I was a bit sceptical because it was like a wrestling film and I was like, I really don't like wrestling. But you watch it, it's not about the wrestling at all, really. Oh, it's like the wrestling is just a theme to put over it. But because it's a true film that actually happened and when it all ends, it's just inspiring and you watch the footage of the actual family, it's lovely. It's one of those films though that I've not really heard much about. Like literally the only reason that we watched it is because 
it was an option on the plane when well, we were coming I, back from Mexico. I, I chose that because Scroobius Pip mentioned it because he did the podcast with Stephen Merchant and I love Stephen Merchant from, he did lots of other things. He's been quite a bit of an actor recently because he's obviously in Logan. JJ Rabbit. He's in, yeah, yeah, because he's one of the main Nazi guys, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So I love Stephen Merchant as an actor and I think he's such a brilliant guy. I like hearing him talk and he's got a really cool, brist, like a posh, bristly yeah. sort of accent. And then he was talking about it. He was like, oh yeah, I'm here to promote my, my new film. They didn't really talk about that that much. They spoke about The Office and that sort of stuff quite a lot. Yeah. But they were like, oh, I'm here to promote a new film, fight with my family. And they, they spoke about it for like five, ten minutes at the end. And Scrooby's Pip was like, I already like wrestling. He, this Scrooby's Pip talking. I already like wrestling. So I was going to probably watch it anyway. But I wasn't, in a brutal honesty, I was kind of, I didn't know what to expect. And then I was like, I came out of the cinema, bloody loved it. It was so good. It was one of my favorite films of the year. And I compl- when I heard him say that, I was like, I'll have to see if I can give that a go. And then, you know, on the plane to Mexico, it was like a 10-hour flight. And we were like, it was on there. And we're like, oh, it's just, I don't know if it's going to be any good. And we watched yeah, it. And it, I really liked it. It ended and we were both just like, that was just so nice. It was a really nice movie. I love that feeling it gives you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was, it was <laughs> absolutely cracking. A quick honourable mention is uh, Toy Story 4. Really yeah. good film. Very... Let's see it, so I'll sum it up with a... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a good it's a good film. I, I liked it. If you, it's to be fair, th- it was quite creepy in parts. Oh yeah, the ventriloquist dummies. Yeah, it was ventriloquist dummies, yeah, and they were freaky as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, and Jordan Peele is in it. I think it's Key and Peele actually. Yeah, both of them yeah and the, the, the fuzzy bunny things. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're really funny in it as well. And it's one of those films where it's not the best Pixar Disney film. It's not the, even the best Toy Story. It's not film. the best Toy Story but film by far. It's no. probably the worst one to be fair, but it's still really good. It's it's just a fun, easy going movie above the rest for most films. That's it. Yeah. Some films it's the weakest as well, but the weakest is still a lot more than most films. Most kids' films, I say nowadays, most of them. When you get, they normally release like you, you get one film a year that's like the Emoji Movie and things like that. They're just wank. That film was so shit. And you get other films that are that sort of crapness, essentially, for lack of a better word. But then most of them, like you know. Whatever the, the the flagship one for DreamWorks, obviously this year was How to Train Your Dragon 3. That was a great movie. All the How to Train Your Dragons are great. I am genuinely really surprised that that came out this year. <laughs> that that makes this year feel absolutely insane because yeah. I don't remember... what I, I remember seeing that film with you, yeah. but I don't remember watching it this year, which is mental to me. Yeah. yeah. Now on TV, I remember just at the end of it, I don't know how, I got some dust in my eye and it's just... Whoa. Yeah, I, I also <laughs> remember being in the cinema and getting dust in my eye. <laughs> Where is this coming from? <laughs> they, they must have oh, <laughs> they must have set it up so that everybody yeah, gets yeah. dust in their eye. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they um. I did a media quiz at work the other day with some of the gu- the, some of the guys in my stu- tutor group and um, tutor group. Yeah. In my tutor group. The tutors. <laughs> in my tutor group, and it, ah, one of them was a it. one of them was a film thing, and the music for How to Train Your Dragon came on, and this kid automatically knew like it was within seconds he was like how to train dragon i was like right what it's like how to train your dragon and then i had a little bit more and i was like yeah you're right but mate that was fast <laughs> um i was gonna say uh last two films really um we saw have you seen shazam or Zombieland? seen shazam i watched it quite recently yeah i was quite disappointed with i that. didn't really like it that Fine. much it's, there's some funny bits in it the kid with the wonky leg yeah he was he's he was the best part. Part. yeah, yeah he, um, he was the best in it uh, post credit scene, scene. Post credit scene is in the cafeteria one of the best fucking things I've seen what, what? I, in the cafeteria you know without spoiling it in the film in the film the, the kid says something about I've got a really good friend and then the, one of the bullies is like what are you oh, bring to school and then right at the end he does yeah, yeah 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 okay really fine. Um, yeah the film was joke. I found that the like, comedy didn't hit the mark for me though I watched that, the comedy was way too young for me yeah and as soon as I watched that I watched that uh, film I told you about which was mid 90s oh yeah and that film engrossed me straight away but Shazam, I was I was in and out watching it. I either. just felt a bit meh. Yeah, I, I know how much I enjoy a phone, but how much I look on my phone. Yeah, because there's some films I will turn my phone off, throw it the upside of the room. Yeah, um, but then some films you're just like, oh, I'm doing that angry bird look now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, there we go. What's on eBay today? <laughs> Why are you watching a film and you don't know how much you're into it? But then some things you're just like phone doesn't even need to be looked at. You don't forget, you forget it, and you're just like, like engrossed in the film. Yeah, and that's so much looking. At the phone. Yeah, I felt like Shazam. I I heard so many good things about it, and then I got, I was like, oh, this is gonna be amazing because I was being quite disappointed with DC, and then I watched it. And I was like, this is still just middle road. I was like, it's not bad. Mm, it's it's not a, bad. it's all right. It's just that once again, the DC are trailing behind Avengers so much. It's like, why would you watch Shazam if you can watch Ant Man? Yeah, like they're nice. not the same film, but the comedy element and the superhero elements are quite parallel in a lot of ways, and they're both Ant Man one and obviously Shazam. They're both silly, fun, child friendly superhero films. Yeah. And they're, they're, and they're much more leaning on the comedy side than the action side. 
But Ant-Man is just infinitely better. Same as yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy. Same as, as yeah. Uber. As someone who hasn't seen a lot of superhero films, which I haven't, I from what I have seen, I do much prefer Marvel to DC. Wonder Woman was the only exception. I haven't shown her that yet. Looks really good. I haven't watched the trailer, but I've got it on Steelbook. Yeah, it yeah. Good. yeah, it's yeah. I. Uh, Wonder Woman is really cool. I'd say it, Wonder Woman is basically like a poor man's uh, Captain America two almost, or Captain America one rather. It's like yeah, it, it's like Cap- actually to be fair, I think Wonder Woman is better than Captain America one. I would agree. That's what I was going to say. But I think the Captain America two destroys Wonder Woman. But I th- but I think the Captain America two is one of the best Wonder Marvel Woman. movies. Yeah, but it's, it's they're different, but it's still definitely worth a watch. Like Captain Wonder Woman, America is Marvel, isn't it? And then yeah. Wonder Woman is DC. Wonder Woman's yeah, the best DC movie they made. Yeah, by far. See, I thought for I me, liked Aquaman. I for me, it. it's probably Wonder Woman then Aquaman. Yeah, I would say that, but that's me still saying I don't like Aquaman. So that's, you know, yeah, after I... the second one, there's not showing much from Justice League or Batman vs Superman. Is it? Oh, Batman vs Superman is so fucking bad. I hate that film. It's oh, so crap. Oh, shit. It's one of the worst films I've ever seen. My brother made me watch that, and I was really confused all the way through. Oh, it's fucking wank. Yeah, it's um, terrible. What uh, other... oh, I was going to say the only other film I've got written down really is Zombieland Two, which you haven't seen, have you? No, no, I just I wasn't too fucked. It's, it's, it. it's, it's probably worth. It's fun. It's it's a I'll fun. Wait, it's one of those ones I'll wait until it comes to yeah, TV. I would not I'll rush wait for glass. I'm glad I waited for glass on that. Yeah, I haven't seen things. I still haven't seen Unbreakable. I've seen just watch Unbreakable. Split. Yeah, because I've seen Split, which is actually really good. But that's yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> well, I think I found with Split, it was. If it wasn't for James McAvoy, like he stole the oh, show yeah, again, he, he is so. so but every time the camera's off him, I don't care. It's because like, obviously the, it's kind of like a horror film ish, and it's about the girls kind of being chased by this thing in a way. But I didn't care about any of the women. I, I just didn't care. So I was like, if any of these people die, I don't care. But what I do care about is how cool yeah. James McAvoy was. Um, but yeah, Zombieland Two. It was. It's good. It's fun. It's funny. It's worth a watch. I remember if you it like making me laugh out loud. Yeah, it's it's really worth a watch. The I problem is. It's not worth buying, I'd say. I'd say it's worth watching on Netflix when it comes out as a one-off with, with a couple of mates having a laugh. But there's no point buying it because it's like it's just worse than the first one. So when you watch it the first time, it's adding to the, the story, the lore, whatever. Yeah. But when you've seen it, it's like, well, if I feel like watching a, a fun zombie comedy film, I'm just going to... I'm either going to watch Shaun of the Dead... I'm gonna watch Dead Snow, or I'm gonna watch. Yeah, I'm gonna watch the first Zombieland film. Why would I watch the second one if it's just a bit worse? Yeah, yeah. But but that's that's more or less. Are there any honourable mentions you want to give out for films? Because there's a couple we have mentioned that like we want to see, Ready or Not. But so, I really wanted to see that film, but we were too late on the mark. Story. What? Sorry. Ready, film? Ready or Not. Oh. Ready or Not, fantastic. I really want to see it. We will. Marriage. Well, what on Netflix? Yeah. Um, yeah, Ready or Not. Show up for that film. Is that actually good? Really good. Awesome. Really good. There's a lot of comedy in it. And he, he's very much, Alex is very much a, a horror aficionado compared to me. Oh, like, I love, love is, it, is it like scary? Thrilling, I'd imagine. Thrilling, yeah. There's a few bits that make your heart race, and I like that. It's um, mm. What I compare it to is the the film where the people the animal masses, British. British. Oh, uh, is Them, Us, Next, one of those. You're Next, isn't it? You're Next, yes. So I haven't first, seen that. So You're Next is, I think You're Next is still better. But I think it's just underneath. Right. Um, and I also did think it was um, another actress, uh, actress for a long time. Yeah, she looks a lot like Effie from uh, Skins. Or do you think? And I was thinking of the one from um, the Wolf of Wall Street, what's her name? Margot Robbie? Yeah, it was Margot Robbie for a long time. Oh, really? It wasn't Margot Robbie. Um, she looks like a combination. Who's your honorable mentions? I don't, I don't, that I pretty much written down all that. We haven't gone to the cinema as much as we wanted um, to. Yeah, this year has been a bit of a bit. But it's year. probably been the weakest year of of films, I'd say. Yeah, go see Joker or watch it. Um, that's a good one. Well, yeah, I mean, really, it's it's Joe. I mean, obviously, Star Wars. I'll say I watched Rise of Skywalker. I'm going to be doing a separate podcast all about Rise of Skywalker on. I think the podcast of VHS Strikes Back, part of the podcast Star Wars collaboration, I think I've been doing like an add on to that. But I would say Rise of Skywalker, it's good, but it's not amazing. I liked and it. It's, it's very flawed. The problem is, I've got, I've, I won't mention them because I don't want to spoil it for Alex, but there's so many plot holes. I wrote it on my phone. I wrote, I wrote about six plot holes on my phone, like straight after watching the film, which is quite upsetting for something like that. And it's just a bit of a repeat of. That's it, yeah, but I mean, it's just continuity, isn't it? Because uh, Star Wars. Carl Star Wars always has uh, plot holes. Yeah, yeah that's the problem. And consistency is the word. Cons- that I was yeah, about. it's got consistency issues, but that's because of George yeah. Lucas. Oh, well. Midsummer. We didn't talk about that, but yeah, go see Midsummer. Yeah, I want to see uh, that. Doctor Sleep. I thought was really, really good. Oh, yeah, I yeah, want to see we, that. We want to see that as well. Um, 
The Lighthouse, I didn't see that, but that was the top of my list of films to see. And are, there, are there any films coming out? Because I'm going to be releasing this in 2020. It's going to be the first Ooh, week, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't release this in the past, so... Ooh. Are there any films coming out next year that you're really, really pumped for? Like, anything you're excited? Parasite comes out on the 1st of January, I think, which is a new Korean movie. It looks amazing. Go see that. Obviously, um, I think Ghostbusters are next no year, isn't it? to die. Oh, the, oh, the new Star Wars. Um, not Star Wars, Star. James Bond. Yeah. Funny, I, I haven't actually seen any of the new James Bonds except Casino Royale. I haven't I, seen I, any of the James Bond films with Daniel Craig. I saw Casino Royale. I don't actually like James Bond very much, but I know your your dad loves it, doesn't it, uh, Alex? Uh, Isn't it your dad who loves James Bond, that and Doctor Who? Um, that was Simon. Oh, you meet Simon, okay. Um, yeah. Oh, did he? Yeah. He was the one we did the quiz with, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. But the um, yeah, because uh, with Double Seven, I could just I find that all the plot is basically the same every film, and I just I can't really get along the with new it. New one looks amazing. We saw though. the trailer; it looks incredible. Yeah, um, yeah Fleabag is writing it. The main lady. Oh, I've heard Fleabag is incredible. Fleabag is. Yeah. I've heard Fleabag uh, is I don't really know, really I don't know good. Anything about it? I just the biggest joke ever though. Apparently, new mutant, <laughs> new mutant. Sorry, is coming out this next year. I really hope so because that that film, <laughs> I think, insane. I think it's gonna suck, but I oh, want it to be no, good. I think it's gonna be good, but they can't fucking. They, they, it, it keeps getting pushed back. Two years ago. Like, well, that's this is what I mean. That's the biggest problem. New mutants is you know X Men, Megan. Generally, you know. I know all of X Men. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> well, I've not seen them. New mutants is a film where there's X Men who are basically is is people put into a facility like an asylum and they're experimented on and I think they become yeah, they either be, yeah they either become mutants or they already were mutants and then they have to escape but they've all got these powers and they have to escape this asylum but it's meant to be like a it's the first superhero horror film that basically other than Bright Burn, but it's decent yeah um, and it's not anti-heroes no what was the film it's Kingsman no, oh the f- yeah because it's, it's I got- haven't seen the second Kingsman it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's very it's kind of like Zombieland so. it's kind of like Zombieland comparable it's like it's basically objectively as good as the first one but because it's basically the same it's not as good hmm. even the end is basically the same as well I really like the guy that's really good the pun? Free guy with Ryan Reynolds in it. Oh! He's the NPC. Yeah, I've heard about that. Him being an NPC in like a video game. Yeah, yeah. it's like, fuck it, I'm going kill everyone. Um, the Gentleman, which is... Um, we saw the trailer for that recently. Guy Ritchie's new film. Cool, Matthew McConaughey. One. It's like the... We saw the trailer oh, for it. Oh, yeah. I, I want to see that. I, that one's got a mixture of British and American actors, doesn't it? Yeah, I, yeah, it does. Oh, I, yeah, it's, oh, yeah, it's got Hugh Grant in it. And yes. I didn't recognise that it was Hugh Grant yeah. because he's got like a Cockney accent. Free Guy... Apparently, yeah, not free guys, sorry, um, Bloodshot, which is alright, Vin Diesel. Yeah. Scoob. Oh, yeah, the new Scooby Doo movie. The first bit looked really nice, and then they fucking ruined it. Um, Death on the Nile, fuck off. They, the guy that I have no idea what that is. Yeah, well, they did um, Murder on the Orient, Orient Express. Oh, oh I found that so boring. boring. Oh, no fucking wank, but they've got the same guy, whatever his name is, he's doing one called Death on the Nile. Oh, oh, it's um the guy who plays Lockhart in Harry Potter, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Gilderoy Lockhart. Oh, that, that actor, he's not a bad actor, but that film was so bland. Antlers, that is a new horror film that's coming out next year. Del Toro's making it, and that looks awesome. Del Toro's, is that the one that made The Orphanage? Yeah, and Pan's Labyrinth. And, I don't uh, like Pan's Labyrinth. And Blade 2, and Hellboy. Yeah, see what I mean? <laughs> so she doesn't like Fight Club. She doesn't. She thinks Empire Strikes Back is the worst Star Wars movie, I, apart from. Attack I don't of the think Clones. Empire Strikes Back is the worst Star Wars you, film. You she thinks that Phantom Menace is better than Empire Strikes Back. Huh? She thinks that Phantom Menace is better than Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> It's because... Right. You suck. No, it's not because I suck. It's because <laughs> all that happens in that film is that they go... It's to, fight club. Welcome. They go to the fucking Dagobah system. Luke Skywalker does some handstands. Yoda sits on his feet for a bit. And that's it's pretty Dagobah. much the premise... Dagobah. Dagobah. It's the Dagobah system. It doesn't matter how you pronounce it, really. It's the Dagobah system. In Star Wars... fucking out there. I don't know. I mean, in Star Wars, everyone pronounces <laughs> everything <laughs> differently. <laughs> Think about Han, Han Solo and the Millennium Falcon. People call Han, Han. Some people call him Han. Han and then the Millennium Han Falcon. Oh, Han. Some people call it the Millennium Falcon. Some people call it the Millennium Falcon. So it's just like me and Han went on our gap year to, <laughs> and then I chundered everywhere. <laughs> the Dagobah system, and it was just very messy. I was trying to, yeah, I don't really know. Yeah, to be fair, whenever I say that I don't like Episode Five that much, I is a lot of people send hate my way. The thing what? is, it's the Phantom Menace isn't a bad movie. It's not as bad as Clone Wars. Oh, you mean Attack of the Clones? Yeah. Clone Wars is the series. Yeah, oh, no, you, you think that's the worst one. So a lot of people I, think that. I fuck it. I can't. Clones. Yeah, I can't stand. See, I think it's, it's, Clones. it's so shit. I think it's better. Well, there's a couple of redeeming bits of it with yeah. the, the animal fights and stuff. I think the last. I I think the last 
40 minutes of Attack of the Clones does redeem it. It's just so goddamn And I think bland. the Anakin, I think the Obi-Wan storyline oh, in Kamino no. is good, that but I think that the Anakin stuff is so it's fucking so bad. It's so shit. And there's just, and there's there's such a huge amount of screen time. No one has any personality in it. And also yeah. the annoying thing is, is that I love Ewan McGregor. I know that Ewan McGregor is a good actor, but in that film, he is shit. When, um, at, when, um, Scott, uh, Anakin is chasing those fucking hemorrhoids around the field oh yeah fuck like me it's like it's like the, it looks like aesthetically like uh what's it uh sound of music like he's like in the same yeah, field but, but with these weird things chasing piles, i hated that film yeah. monster version of an ass pile <laughs> around the fucking field oh, and no. she's like ah bunny ha chasing around and he's riding one yeah I, mean, I didn't see that coming i'm <laughs> on the back of one now Oh, and then he casually talks oh. about fascism, and she's like, "Hi, oh, oh, you're so cute, Annie." Oh, you're so cute. So, what, what would you do if someone doesn't follow your law? Oh, funny. It's like, ha you. It's like, oh, um, what what would you do if someone didn't follow the laws that you're uh, theoretically putting in place, Anakin? Oh, I just get someone to force them to do it, and she's like, "Ha, oh, yeah, it's fine." Oh, it's like that's literal God. fascism. It's like she's not. She's not a smart girl, is she? Didn't pick up on the warning signals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. Fuck's sake, man. Also, one thing you need to check out, I don't know if you've seen this, is that the, you know, the no yeah. in the French edition of the film is so <laughs> much fucking better. What is it better because it's worse? No, 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 it sounds just awesome. Really? It's so much better. It's like, oh, yeah, I'll have to show it to you after this podcast. Yeah, well, definitely. It's fucking class. It's, yeah, it's just they changed it a few little bits, but it's class. The French edition version is so Have you, have you seen, um, we'll, end this, no. we'll end this podcast in a second, but have you, have you seen the... Um, <laughs> Someone has remade the Obi Wan Darth Vader fight scene from um, from I, A New I Hope. Sent it, I sent it to you. you. I thought I couldn't remember who sent it to me. I but sent it to you. Yeah, and then Mike made me watch it. So thank you. <laughs> it's so, it's so fucking. It was good. good. They, they read the editing of it. Um, one thing: the there's a YouTube channel where they take films and they change things up. They did some on Star Wars to make it gory. Oh really? Recently, um, and it's fucking awesome. And there's a bit with the the start of um, the last one, the last of the trilogy, new one, the oh. old ones. Oh, uh, Return of the Jedi. No, the other one. Oh, the prequels. So yeah. you mean Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith. There's a bit of the start where they're in the, the co- cockpits and shooting and stuff. Yeah, and there's a bit of the monster dies, he crashes and he burns at the start. Yeah. There. They changed it and it made it really gory and he's talking to his little daughter and the little <laughs> the what? Tannoy. Oh, I he's see. He's like, oh, come home for Christmas and he's like, oh, fuck, I'm being shot. And he's like, oh, fuck. That is brilliant. Yeah, I have to show you a few things for us to go. Like, you, 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 Shooting up, yeah, that's cool. But well, we'll finish this up. Well, Alex, as always, it's lovely having you on the podcast just to talk about films. On the 18th of January, guys, this is coming out. That's not when it's coming out. It's going to come before that. On the 18th of January, <laughs> didn't get. I'll put, his, I'll put his address in there so people can uh, send yeah, you kids. Send me postcards. <laughs> <laughs> send me Everyone postcards. Everyone in Wales listening to this podcast. I love you. I live in Neath. Neath boys, yeah. <laughs> what up? Swansea gang. I was just going to wait until you <laughs> how far you're going to go saying random Welsh. Please, Please don't. Pembershire lads. The Pembrokeshire lads yeah, sound Kansas like Sim, assholes. Anderson Lambs, yeah. Sound like Gowers a football team. Sim Hobgoblins, <laughs> the um, the Pembrey tortoises. Are you up. saying that because you looked at our tortoises? I'm looking at things around the room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. beige sofas. The beige sofas of uh, <laughs> fucking Snowdonia. <laughs> Land we play. <laughs> I will keep going. Well, that's not. I will stop. Okay. I need to. Um, you need to Van Gogh. Okay. Well, I'm lovely right. speaking to you as always, Alex and. Hello, little dog. Bye. Bye. And that's the end of the podcast. Thanks, as always, for tuning in, guys. Next week will be my chat with Janine Mercer of the Odd Entity podcast. That's going to be a two-parter. Um, I've got a chat with someone on Tuesday regarding sort of mental health and that sort of uh, subject matter. Um, I imagine I'll still release the Janine Mercer one first, but if my guest on Tuesday specifically asked for the episode to be released um, on the weekend, I that should be fine because Janine said there's no specific rush to the episode with her. I've then also got another two chats of people. One is with a podcaster, the other is with another author. Um, I've That's all for January recordings. Um, I'm trying not to plan too far ahead because last end of last year I just overwhelmed myself and had like weeks and weeks without having to record any episodes because I was so ahead. So I kind of want to try and get the happy medium in that regard. I'm going to try and do some more collaborations with podcasters and things. I've, I played the promo for the Comics Emotion podcast um, of, of this part of the episode and anyone who's been following uh, Genuine Chit Chat at all knows that uh, myself as Genuine Chit Chat um, collaborated with Comics in Motion, VHS Strikes Back and the 20th Century Geek podcasts. Um, we had an episode on the channel just before Christmas um, where we 
we reviewed um, the sequel trilogy and we also did predictions for episode 9 um, and also on 20th Century Geek we did an overview of the prequel and the original trilogy and on the Comics and Motion slash VHS Strikes Back feeds um, we did like a deep dive into uh, A New Hope so all Star Wars related stuff um, and on Monday I'm basically recording uh, the episode 9 review I believe that's going to be on Comics and Motion or VHS Strikes Back feeds um, they're both hosted by the same two people so VHS Strikes Back and Comics and Motion have separate episodes and things but with these collaborations I think they've been putting them on both so yeah I just thought I'd flag that up as well to you guys obviously when that happens I'll talk in the intro when it's fully released and I'll include links and stuff but if you really like that Star Wars collaboration between the other uh, three podcasts and you're interested in my views on episode 9 being such a massive Star Wars fan I lightly touched upon it in this episode but I will say in this episode was after I'd seen it the first time I have actually watched it twice now and I'm less disappointed and I did enjoy it a lot more the second time as a bit more fun but um keep an eye out for that and general stuff um reviewing on iTunes is always appreciated reviewing anywhere there are reviews is always appreciated sharing on social media is really appreciated and spreading via word of mouth is too uh, I don't put any money into advertising for this show um I rely on word of mouth cross promotional things and guesting on other people's shows so anyone who likes the show if you check out the back catalog if this is your first time um i've got chats with everyone not literally everyone obviously that would be a, a lot of time wasted but there's you know movie chats musical chats uh chats about mental health about religion about politics about relatively everything i'd say apart from sport and cars i think they're the only two things i haven't had like a huge amount of discussion on those um but you know check out the back catalog and as I've said to people, on YouTube, almost no one listens to it. But on YouTube, I have put playlists showing sort of in genres of certain chats that are more funny, some that are more serious, some about movies, some about this, that, etc. So if you're a listener and you like the show, obviously you can contact myself, you can email me or contact me in any of the social media places and I will respond and give you recommendations. But if you don't want to wait that long and you want something quite quick, just go on YouTube, check out the playlists there and you'll find them there. Or on Instagram, I've got snippets of most of the shows so you can go and check those out too. But but um, I'm going to stop rambling now at the end of this, guys. Uh, thanks, as always, for tuning in. I appreciate each and every one of you listening, especially this far. And I'll talk to all of you next week.